One of the main goals of thermodynamics is trying to figure out when a reaction will be spontaneous or when it won't be spontaneous. And this is the second law of thermodynamics. A spontaneous reaction is like a ball that's held in the middle of a hill. If you let go of the ball, there's a spontaneous direction down that gravity will pull on this ball and the ball rolls downhill spontaneously. It never rolls uphill spontaneously. And a spontaneous reaction is one in which the change in entropy of the universe is always a positive number. The universe is made up of two things. What you're studying, which is the system, plus everything else in the universe, which is called the surroundings. So usually in chemistry, you can replace delta S system with delta S reaction. If we're looking at a chemical reaction, that's our system. The second law of thermodynamics can also be described in terms of the change in the Gibbs energy. And a spontaneous reaction has a negative value of delta G. Delta G for a chemical reaction is given by this formula, delta H minus T delta S. So you have the enthalpy change, you have the entropy change, and you also have the temperature. So for example, let's say we have a reaction with a negative delta H. That's an exothermic reaction. This particular reaction, we're told, has a negative value of delta S. So negative delta S means the reactant side is more random. What we're asked to find is what conditions of temperature will this be spontaneous? Is it going to be every temperature, no temperature, only when it's cold, or only when it's hot? And the way you can figure this out is by looking at the two extremes. The lowest possible temperature you can have is zero Kelvin. So if you plug in zero, this second term in the Gibbs formula goes to zero. So delta G is simply the first term, delta H. And we were told in this problem that delta H was a negative number. So if delta H is a negative number, then we know under this cold condition, delta G will be negative. And a negative delta G means the reaction is spontaneous. We can figure out what happens when the reaction is hot by plugging in an infinitely large temperature. If you plug in infinity into this equation, now the second term is going to be the important one and the first term is going to be relatively small, small enough that we can neglect it. So under high temperature conditions, delta G is just the second term, which is negative T times delta S. So we have a negative sign. The temperature T, temperature is always in Kelvin, so that has to be a positive. And then delta S for this particular reaction we were told that it's negative. So negative times a positive times a negative gives us a positive. So under hot conditions, this reaction is not spontaneous. So when it's hot, the reaction is not spontaneous. When, it cold, when it's cold, it is spontaneous. So this particular example is spontaneous only at low temperatures. Notice there are four temperature conditions. There are four possibilities because delta H could either be positive or negative and delta S could either be positive or negative.